Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's movie blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today, we've got a couple of things to talk about. The first of which, of course, is that, oh my gosh, more Ryan Johnson rumor news. But no, I'm kidding. I, I just, I can't talk about it anymore. But what I did want to just simply, quickly say is I think it's hilarious that now, instead of it just being, come on, hounds, river, willow, calm down. Sorry about that, everybody. But anyway, I think it's hilarious that instead of it being, oh, you know, trilogy being confirmed or trilogy no longer being confirmed that now the rumor going around is that Ryan Johnson is no longer allowed to confirm whether he's working on the trilogy or not. I just, <laughs> I love bounding into comics, but to me, that headline just had me laughing. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not only is it just a, oh no, it's confirmed or, oh no, it's not confirmed. Now he is no longer allowed to comment on whether or not it is confirmed or not. I hope it's true. To be all honest, I hope it's true because that to me means that he's not going to get a trilogy, but still, holy crap. But the news that I actually really wanted to talk about, because I haven't talked about it in a while on this channel, is Batwoman, which is coming up very soon, uh, very beginning of October. This is going to be coming up on Sundays, apparently, and also it's going to be going on in conjunction with Supergirl, which, as we all know, is every person's favorite superhero show on the CW only to be taken over, of course, by Batwoman. And that is, of course, that the Rotten Tomatoes score has been released, but even more importantly, because we know that the Rotten Tomatoes score doesn't mean a damn thing, is the actual reviews for the show are coming out. And even the biased critics cannot hold back and cannot hide the fact that the show is a completely agenda-driven program. And this is fantastic. So for those that want to know, we have the reviews right now for season one of the series coming out, which is amazing to me that there are people out there that get the entire season for entire series of a show before they even come out. That to me is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Like obviously I understand that sometimes people will get access, you know, early access to movies. And I already am still mad at the fact that, that people got access to the Joker over a month before it came out. I think that's a little ridiculous. But the fact that TV series too, this happens for is pretty ridiculous nonetheless. But I can see the average rating for it is a 6.67. So that's what I actually look at. You know, people oftentimes look at the tomato meter. The tomato meter doesn't mean a damn thing. The tomato meter is a complete joke because if you actually dive into the reviews and the history of the reviewers, they can give a movie a two out of four and then one day that's fresh in their minds and then other days it's rotten. And the reviewer has the ability to choose whether it's a rotten or a positive score, right? And that just to me is just stupid because every grade should be the same, right? Every grade should be treated equally. If I give a two out of four and it's fresh for this movie, then a two out of four for that movie should also be fresh too. Or if it's rotten, it should be rotten and it should therefore say as much. And so that's why I look at that score and I say, okay, that score doesn't mean a damn thing. And instead I look to the average score because what that tells me is that, okay, it's got a 66%. It's got a failing grade by the reviewers. That is the most important score and I wish it got more highlighted on there. But of course it won't because they get to play around with and control the tomato meter score to keep it in that fresh rating territory for some shows and for some movies. And that is, of course, something that they would always like to continue to be able to control. So it has three fresh ratings and two rotten ratings. So five people, apparently, have gotten access to the entire series. And these reviews, though, are freaking fantastic. So Alex Mady over at Joe Blow, uh, go ahead and give it a 6 out of 10 and says, Batwoman has a lot of potential, but this pilot feels too torn. Okay, so the pilot is something that you were able to access in review. So how is it that it's already just for an entire season? I guess it's a rolling thing. Like to me, I don't understand why for a, like you have this rating for an entire season and it's not for just one singular episode. That to me doesn't make any sense. That to me also points out how Rotten Tomato system is broken. The fact that this is all counting as a season rating and that they're taking individual reviews for apparently individual episodes, at least according to this excerpt here. Again, I would have to look into that, but I actually don't really want to go to any of these sites because I don't really like any of these sites overall, uh, except for Bounding into Comics and Bounding into Comics. If you ever want to start to you know, put out your own reviews similar to this and your own scoring system, I would be all down for that. And I would love to join you in your effort and provide some reviews as well. Uh, I'd like to, you know, let me know. John F. Trent, if you want to do something together, let me know, man. I'd, I'd, I'd be glad to try and contribute something. And I, I would not charge a thing. But with this one, it says, Batwoman has a lot of potential, but this feel this pilot feels too torn. When the show is not trying too hard, it works decently. But when it forces itself to deliver messages, it falls apart. So listen to that review for the pilot episode. When the show is not trying too hard, it only works decently. So the best that he can say about the show is that it's decent when it's not trying too hard. But when it forces messages, it falls apart. Meaning that this show forces messages, probably more often than not, and yet you still give the show a 6 out of 10. Really. And this is a critical review. And they're still giving it a 6 out of 10. 
Like, if in my mind, if I was going to say the show is decent, but it has mostly messaging in there that falls apart and the entire narrative falls apart, that's a bad show. That is a rotten show. Let's dive into some of these other ones. Comicbook.com, the, the very reliable comicbook.com, Charlie Ridgely there says, I give it a three out of five. He says, thanks to a poorly conceived supporting cast and a serious lack of identity, the Batwoman pilot isn't all that great, especially if you're not a mega fan of the already existing Arrowverse franchise. And you give it a three out of five. You gave it a 3 out of 5, which means you probably gave it a fresh rating, and yet you said it's poorly conceived, and you said it's not that great. How is it that these critics are still allowed to give these scores? How are they even allowed to give their opinion when their opinions are filled with just political nonsense? That is just, oh my gosh, comicbook.com. Oh my goodness gracious, that's just ridiculous. Let's get into some of the, the, more, the more positive ones here. And so here is from Delia Harrington. So now we got the whammon coming in here. So it says, Den, Den of Geek gives a, a fresh rating out of 4 out of 5. and says, a stylish entry into the Arrowverse, one that is worthy of both the Bat family and the impressive DC TV lineage. Okay, so if we're going to assume that everything that was said in the previous statements about it being filled with messaging and forced messaging at that, and that it's overall kind of falling apart when it does do those things, that tells me that you like the messaging and that's why you're giving it a high score. Like, how can I try, if I know, based on the other reviews, that there's political messaging in the series and you don't even mention any of it, but just say, oh, it's a great show, then that tells me that you like the show when it gives you the messages and that means that you are already inherently biased towards liking this series, as I'm sure many people are going to be biased towards it because they want shows that push political messages to be the ones that end up getting all the attention. Susanna Polo adds to from Screen Rant, says, gives the film a fresh rating. She writes, if I have a favorite thing about it, it's that the show understands that the best Batwoman stories are about integrity and who can and can't afford to have it. And of course, those that can afford to have integrity are the ones that push for political agendas. Is that right, Susanna? You could say. One could argue. And then Jesse Shadeen over on IGN gave it a fresh rating somehow of 6.7 out of 10. I love these random scores like that. They write, while the new series will have little trouble filling the void left by Arrow next year, it may face a more difficult battle when it comes to establishing its own identity. And I wonder why is that? Could it be because it has a political, an obvious political agenda? Could it be that the trailers themselves point to it being very clearly an agenda, an agenda driven show? Could it be that? Could it be? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder, critics. Ones that somehow gave it a fresh rating. Notice how in all of those, the ones that are the most critical still gave the show relatively fresh ratings. Overall, relatively fresh ratings. And then the ones that were fresh didn't mention any of the other things that were talked about because why would they? Why would they want to reveal that the reasons why they like the show and are defending the show is because it's politically relevant to them? It's amazing that these same people are probably the same people that were critical of shows and movies rather like the Joker, right? When they're like, oh my gosh, it supports toxic masculinity and we can't have that. We can't have that. Ridiculous. Anyway, Batwoman will debut on the CW Sunday, October 6th. I actually kind of really want to watch the pilot episode alone just so that I can tear it apart because I know based on these people that are already predisposed to liking this garbage, if even a couple of them can't keep back the fact that it's politically motivated, and that it's not well-developed because of that reason, something tells me that to someone who's more sensitive to this woke crap like I am, that it's going to be non-stop, and that there's going to be almost no real actual narrative to it except for pushing messages to it. So again, a day's view is October 6th at 8 Eastern time over on The CW, and the official synopsis is this. Kate Kane, Ruby Rose, soars through the shadowed streets of Gotham as Batwoman, but don't call her a hero yet. In a city desperate for a savior, she must first overcome her own demons before embracing the call to be Gotham's symbol of hope. I wonder where Batman is in this universe. I'm sure it's already been revealed in those trailers, but honestly, I wasn't paying enough attention to those damn trailers except for the woke crap that I don't even remember what it's about. Something tells me that that's exactly what the show is going to be. It's going to be completely forgettable nonsense. But anyway, what else thoughts about this? Do you think that the Rotten Tomato scores are, are, are kind of skewered here? The fact that it's at right at the cusp at 59% is when it goes rotten. The fact that this is for the entire season when only the pilot seems to have been actually seen by the audiences. Because sometimes it takes a while for those episodes to come out and sometimes they're still even working on episodes that have already been filmed and in the can but don't come out until later in the season. So what do you all think about that? Again, I think it's kind of ridiculous for the fact that they have the entire season being rated here and not just per episode. Because to me, per episode is a lot more realistic and is a lot more authentic 
especially if you're going to be taking individual reviews for one episode and counting them towards the entire season and saying, look, we have a fresh season. We have a fresh show right here. It's kind of ridiculous. Though 60% is definitely not high. And hopefully most people can look at this and see, okay, there's something else going on here, especially when we dive into these actual reviews, because I think it's important for us to dive further into it. So let me know your thoughts about this and all the things in the comment section below. Also, I want to give two shout outs really quick uh, and shout outs that you might not actually be expecting because um, I do know that I have one subscriber that's sent me some stuff that hasn't come in yet. But first, I need to shout out my mom. Mama Odin, because uh, for my birthday, she got me an early birthday present. It's not till the end of the month, uh, but she got me the Liturgy of the Hours four-volume set. So I just set up the volume before I started streaming. So I don't talk about my faith a whole lot directly on the show. Obviously, I mention on my streams more often than not. But again, huge shout out to Mama Odin, because it's something that I've wanted for a long time. And now that I've taken uh, the time to do Christian prayer a lot more often, I, I really want to be able to commit to doing pretty much all of the hours that I possibly can. Uh, so I'm very excited to get started on that uh, when the stream ends. And also, I need to give a huge shout out to Arrow Video and a couple other people because I got some movies to review. So the way that I plan on doing this is that I will be doing a, a general review of all the movies on this channel, but I'm going to be doing individual reviews for the movies themselves as movies on my secondary channel, Welcome to Asgard. So if, you wanna, if you're interested in any of these movies and what my thoughts are on the actual individual movies themselves, please click the eye above my head and go ahead and subscribe over to the Welcome to Asgard channel. But some of the mo movies that I got and I can't wait to dive into are things like Mountain Rest, so here we've got this uh, this Blu-ray. So again, some of these, uh, this is from Film Rise. Uh, we've got Wildland. And then here are some of the Arrow re releases of In the Aftermath. I've never owned an Arrow release before, but I always hear that they are very good releases. Uh, Toys are not for children. I've also got Shiraz. Don't know what that is. And then I got some DVDs as well. I've got Christmas Carol with Alistair Sim as Scrooge, which is a version of the film I've never seen before. I've got Skateboard, the movie that defies gravity, looks like to be an animated film. So I'm excited for that. And then the last DVD is Chicago Cab. Do you dare pay the fare? With Gillian Anderson, John Cusack, and uh, Lori Metcalf, Julianne Moore, Tracy Letts. This is a great cast. Holy crap. Michael Shannon, John C. Riley, a young John C. Riley, and Michael Ironside. So if you want my individual thoughts on that, go check out Welcome to Asgard, and I'm going to do a general review of all the releases at some point in the future once I have time to actually watch them so I can give you my thoughts on the overall uh, release of the film, the overall uh, visual effects of the film, the audio quality as well, and I'm going to try and do more of those types of things for this channel, especially if uh, this company continues to send me movies to review like this and other companies potentially send me more in the future also. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking through to the end. If you like this video, smash the like button. Give me a subscribe. It helps me out a lot. You're all amazing, beautiful people. It's because of people like you that people can now send me stuff like this you know companies can now send me movies to review I, I would not be able to be here right now if it wasn't for my awesome supporters people that always drop the like always watch the videos always leave comments i wish that i could read all the comments like i used to but obviously you know that the channel has just kind of gone crazy with comments lately and so thank you for everyone at the bottom of my heart for sticking around to watch this y'all the people that i'm talking to right now you and only you seriously from the bottom of my heart it means so much and if you ever want more you know interaction with me uh please Feel free to watch our live streams. We have Monday, Tuesday, uh, Saturday streams on this channel. And then I do Friday night streams over on Nerdrotic's channel. And I try and stay active in the chat whenever I'm not talking over on that channel. But I read every single comment on my live streams. If those that don't know, as long as you just type in Odin question, which is something uh, that you'll learn very quickly how to do when you start watching the live streams. But anyway, the next live stream tonight will be at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And there's 8 p.m. Eastern time on Monday, Tuesday, and Saturdays. And we talk about movies, pop culture, anything that y'all want to talk about as well. Well, and yeah, I don't just read super chats. And so once again, thank you so much for everyone that supports the channel. Seriously, thank you so much to Aero Video and to the other uh, groups. Again, I'm going to give better, more accurate shout out of the company that sent this to me. Um, but I just know that there were Aero, Aero Video releases in here. So thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.